you ever find yourself in a discussion with someone and they claim something you know isn't quite right but you can't articulate why? Well stay tuned because by the end of today's video you'll understand at a high level what logical fallacies are, who commits them along with some common examples and also what you can do in response to them. Sounds good? Well, let's get into it. So what is a logical fallacy? A fallacy in logic is the use of invalid or faulty reasoning when making an argument. To explain this a little bit further, it's important to add some context to some of the words in that sentence, as they have a very specific meaning in logic and philosophy. An argument is a series of statements called premises that are used to determine how true another statement is the conclusion. To determine the validity of an argument, you can look at its premises. If we were to assume that all the premises were true, would the conclusion follow with complete certainty? If yes, the argument is valid. If no, then it's invalid. Know that the premises and conclusion do not need to be true for an argument to be valid. The conclusion just needs to be the only possible outcome of the premises taken together. If an argument is valid and the premises and the conclusion are all indeed true, then an argument can be said to be sound. Fallacies themselves can take two different forms, formal fallacies and informal fallacies, with formal fallacies being more focused on an error in the form of the argument and informal fallacies on the error in reasoning. To find out more about these types, I've linked a video in the description, as discussing these in detail now is a little bit beyond the scope of this video. In this video, we'll focus on informal fallacies, since these tend to come up more in everyday conversation, at least from my experience. So why is it important to know about logical fallacies? Well, knowing about fallacies can help us reason better and spot when others and ourselves are using them. It can also help us better articulate our responses to fallacious arguments and overall with our critical thinking skills. So who is susceptible to committing logical fallacies? Well, I gave it away in the previous part a little bit, but it's everyone, including you and me. We all commit logical fallacies. Though some will use fallacies as a technique to mislead others intentionally, most of the time people do this unintentionally, and as such, we should not assume malice. So now that we know a little bit more about logical fallacies, we should look at some common examples. Straw man fallacy is one of the more common fallacies that you may come across. Outside of the context of fallacies, a straw man is constructed and placed in a field to represent a person, albeit a person which isn't real. Much like its namesake, a straw man fallacy is where a person constructs your argument and misrepresents it in the process to make your argument appear weaker than it actually is and thus make it easier to argue against. To look at this structurally, we'll use an example of two people discussing what takeout they want to buy. It's a little bit trivial, but stay with me for the example. So we'll call these people person A and person B. So person A turns to person B and says, I prefer to have a pizza instead of burgers. Person B responds, why do you hate burgers? Notice that person A never said that they hated burgers, just that they would prefer the pizza over the burger. At this point, person A may feel compelled to argue that they do not hate burgers, which is completely changing the discussion. If you recognise that someone is doing this to you, do not allow the argument to proceed, unless that person in question can fairly represent what you're saying. Point out that they are misrepresenting your argument, and put the responsibility back in their court by forcing them to defend their view and justify how their representation of your claim matches the actual claim that you were making. While some people will straw man you intentionally, I think it's fair to say that others may do it simply because they've misunderstood your position. Don't forget that you may also unintentionally misrepresent other people's arguments. To avoid doing this, try a method known as steel manning. Restate the other person's argument back to them in the most positive and charitable way possible and ask them if they agree with your representation of their argument. Once you've established that that is their position, you can then calmly explain your counter to their claim. This section comes with two fallacies for the price of one, an appeal to tradition and appeal to novelty, which are two sides of the same coin. An appeal to tradition is at its core the argument that this is right because we've always done it this way. This is built on two assumptions that are not necessarily true. That firstly, the assumption that because the old ways of thinking were the prevailing norm at the time that they were correct, despite the very real possibility that the tradition was established on incorrect grounds. The second being that because those justifications may have been valid at the time that the tradition was established, then they must still be valid. However, circumstances could have changed that have rendered those prior justifications now invalid. On the other side of the coin is the appeal to novelty. The appeal to novelty at its core 
takes a form similar to this is the right way to do it exclusively because it's new and modern. Usually this takes the form where a person without any investigation prematurely assumes that the status quo is not as good as novel solutions. It might very well be the case that the traditional approach or the novel approach is indeed correct, but either of those claims is fallacious unless they are supported with further evidence. So before entirely rejecting someone's viewpoint in either direction, ask them for more reasons outside of traditional novelty that are sufficient to support their claim. An appeal to nature is a fallacy whereby an individual cites that because something is natural or found in nature that it is preferable or inherently good. Appeal to nature arguments are centred around the same false premise, namely the belief that the quality of something being natural automatically means that something is necessarily good or better than something that is unnatural. To counter these types of arguments, you could either ask the person making the appeal to nature to define what natural actually means, or point out that it is incorrect to assume that just because something is natural, that it is by definition inherently good. Ideally, you should try to provide some relevant examples. An example of an appeal to nature could be, herbal medicine is more natural than antibiotics, so it's better for you. Many new antimicrobial drugs are derived from plant sources, and antibiotics were first derived from molds, which runs contrary again to the examples given in the appeal to nature fallacy. Another example response could be, well, cyanide is found in apple pits, therefore it is natural. Does this mean that cyanide is good for you? Like many other fallacies, the conclusion could be correct, but the premises support of the conclusion are flawed. So these are just a handful of the vast array of logical fallacies out there. It should be noted that a single claim that someone makes could actually be a blend of different fallacies. There's even a fallacy known as the fallacy fallacy where someone rejects someone's argument as false because it contained a fallacy. As covered, just because someone uses a fallacious argument to support their conclusion, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're wrong. They're just giving you a bad reason to believe their conclusion. A good introductory read, which is one of the sources for this video, is the short book Fantastic Fallacies and Where to Find Them by David Robert Worley. The link to this book can be found in the description and by purchasing it with the link, you actually help further support this channel. For me, as someone who's only just recently started to dip my toe into the pool of philosophy, learning about fallacies has started to help me build a toolkit to critically evaluate information and arguments presented across a range of areas in my life. Overall, I consider them a useful tool to evaluate my own and others' reasoning. A note of caution, however. In my opinion, whilst knowing about fallacies is a useful tool, simply shouting people down with the names of fallacies outside of a formal debate is not going to help progress the discussion further. I think we should try to be as charitable as possible in interpreting other people's positions and ask for clarifications if needed, and also employ some of the techniques discussed in this video. Furthermore, we should avoid making assumptions as much as possible, and remember that we all commit logical fallacies from time to time. So there you have it, a brief introduction to the concept of logical fallacies, which I hope you found insightful and worthwhile. The key takeaways from today's video are, a fallacy in logic is the use of invalid or faulty reasoning when making an argument. An argument is a series of premises and a conclusion. An argument can be valid and still have a false conclusion, but a sound argument is both valid and has a true conclusion. Everyone commits logical fallacies from time to time, and logical fallacies are not always intentional, but they do often mislead or confuse people. If you enjoyed today's video, please consider liking and subscribing. And why not drop a comment below and share your thoughts. To the right of me are some other videos of mine, so why not check them out as well. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you all again next time.